Yeah, so I got some good feedback about the rant that we had regarding a statement made by Chris Hedges, where we should out, get out there and do something uh, that we can actually do Occupy Actions as an individual. Um, and that brought to mind the fact that uh, people were fascinated by it that they probably don't know a whole lot about Chris Hedges, which I think is an academic mistake. It's a learning mistake. Uh, Chris Hedges is um, uh, a, a wonderful author who is uh, in tune with the Occupy movement uh, in a big way. But it isn't just Chris Hedges. There's a lot of other people out there who are writing in the spirit of Occupy that we should be listening to. Another one that I find absolutely fascinating is Cornel West. Um, isn't he amazing, Chris? Amazing. Uh, uh, he, he is on fire and um, he's uh, spiritual without being religious. Um, an amazing guy. Yeah, an amazing guy, guy. for the people. Any I like race, that spirit. any religion, he is power to the people, man. Yeah. You know us. Oh. And he will let you have it in a heartbeat. Yeah, a very learned man. He's a PhD, and I can't remember what university he's at. Ivy League. Yeah. Definitely an I. Yeah. He, he was that? Ivy League. He may, may be. Maybe. And he and Chris Hedges are teachers um, who teach in the prison system as well. Uh, that brings to mind, uh, Chris Hedges taught uh, a history course in one of the prisons, and he used a book uh, written by Howard Zinn. That's the third person, folks. Start reading. Okay, that's the third person, Howard Zinn. He wrote a book, I think it's called A People's History of the United States, that gives uh, a review of history from Christopher Columbus when he came over and stole the discovery of America from one of his common workers on the boat and took the reward for having discovered America and the glory for it and then proceeded to um, uh, to pull the jewelry out of the ears of the natives because he wanted to take some gold back. That's Howard Zinn telling you the truth about Christopher Columbus. Yeah. And he goes the whole way through history of the United States. Um, Howard Zinn also has a book out called The Activist Handbook, which gives you everything, the lowdown on everything that you need to do to get your point made. I have that book at home if you want to share that. That's another good one. A another person that people should be uh, should be reading is Noam Chomsky. Uh, he's MIT. Uh, and he is another brilliant uh, person who speaks in the tone of Occupy. Um, and these are just a couple examples. Chris Hedges, Cornell West, another one, Tavis Smiley. Um, oftentimes teams up with uh, these guys, and he has a, uh, a show that he does as well. Um, Noam Chomsky, uh, all these guys have interacted uh, together. I don't know whether they all met each other. But when I'm watching uh, videos and stuff, I see a lot of this guy with that guy and that guy with that guy. So they are, um, I would call them the academic fathers of the movement, even though most of them would say uh, they don't want to be leaders. Um, they are, um, at very least, advisors and educators. And so if you want to be smart about your confrontation with the opposition, you need to have some of the facts. You need to learn some things. You need to have the right spirit. These guys do that. These guys do that very well. It sounds like um, we need to begin a recommended reading list. Yeah, we probably do. And th there's, we do. We, uh, that, would, that would be great. There's another guy who, who wrote, and I cannot remember his name now, uh, 198 Methods for the Revolution. Uh, do you remember the name of that guy, Sean? I, I can't, it's not coming to my head. Uh, but he has a small closet uh, in, uh, in Cambridge where his, his company works out of. And he's, um, it, a lot of people claim that he has a great deal of the responsibility for the, um, uh, the revolutionary tactics, strategies and tactics that um, help to uh, change some things in the Middle East. Uh, he, and, and of course, then there's there's some classics who you ought to be reading. You ought to be reading Thomas Paine. If you're smart enough to understand it, and I'm not. I've, re I've tried to read Common Sense, and he, he's too smart for me. I can't figure him out. I listen to people talk about Thomas Paine, and how he was one of the founders of the revolution, who got bounced out because he wanted to continue to be revolutionary and turn things around uh, and get things away from uh, the wealthy at the time of the American Revolution. So you have to be reading Thomas Paine, because uh, he's another one of the brilliant founding fathers of, um, uh, of the revolution. Great and, stuff. And as revolution aside, you know, uh, 
traditional or classic is Henry David Thoreau, you know? Absolutely. Well, that fought, is you know, civil disobedience. You know, Thoreau was the premier guy on living simply and knowing what was important in life. You know, knowing how to take a point and, and try to make those changes needed, again, for the people. All about empowering the people. So if you haven't read anything by Thoreau, get moving. Yeah, and then, and then there are other. I recommend reading is Karl Marx. Karl Marx. Uh, okay. After reading him, it was nothing like what I was taught in high school and stuff like that about what he was about. It had nothing to do with about. It. One thing that he did, he did say that communism cannot survive without freedom. Mm -hmm. What they had in Soviet Russia, what they have in China, was not communism. It was a dictatorship that pretended to be communist. Mm -hmm. And then, and then just talking about some classics, there's always Gandhi oh, yeah. to be read, and Martin Luther King to be read. Um, and my suggestion for most of these is if you can do it, <coughs> read the original documents, not the interpretation of the, of the documents, because when you read the originals of these guys, it is different than the commentary on them. Um, mass media tends to slant things to the favor of uh, uh, the one-tenth of one percent, uh, the money uh, class that rules us. And so to get these ideas in the original documents, I think is good, if you can read them. Now, I can't read all, these, all this stuff in the original because, frankly, I'm not that smart. But what I can do is I can read them uh, in the original with commentary beside it to help me understand what they're saying. And it all looks like when Howard Zen uh, got together with uh, Chris Hedges and talked about, or was it Cornell West and Chris Hedges got together and talked about Thomas Paine in, in a format, I understood Thomas Paine. <laughs> and I got it, and I got, wow, I finally know what this guy's talking about. I understand why they wanted him out of the government. I understand why they wanted to bounce him out of the country. I get it. Okay, I get it. So I listen to people, but that's, that's the point of uh, read the originals or, or make sure that the stuff that's not that's commentary is written by people who actually um, appreciate the perspective of the author. Uh, I think that makes a big difference. And there are things that I suggest reading, and you have to put everything out of your mind you've ever been taught in Sunday school. Is oh, yeah. Read the Bible. Read it from cover to cover. Especially paying attention to what they actually say about what these... Um, uh, should I call false prophets are telling us that it says? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try to find out for yourself what it really says. It doesn't. I'm not saying that you have to believe in God or Jesus or anything. Just read what it says. You know, and try to determine if it's actually historically correct in any sense of the word. Mm -hmm. I think that's the other big point when you look at the Bible, yeah. Because we find so many people interpret it for their convenience in this day and age, you know. Whatever is going on that can benefit them, mm -hmm. they will use biblical quotes to try to justify things. And that is just sacrilegious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, another one is read the Tao. <laughs> The Tao, yes. The Tao is very good wisdom. It's much older than the Bible. And I'd make a plug for Buddhist literature, too. Mm -hmm. Tibet, Tibet, the Book of the Dead. It's you know, mm -hmm. another really huge one, but well worth looking at in sections. But I don't think all of the literature that's written by Buddhism is consent, cons consistent and congruent with the principles of Occupy. Uh, they're a little too passive. Okay. They, they don't see the perspective of evil that um, I think um, most of us here today are aware of. Well, okay? you know what, that's the a best really thing good I could... point, because they do not see good and evil, you're right. Yeah, that's right. They, they, they'd, say, they'd say be nice to the hedge fund manager. They, don't make it they wouldn't ask yeah, him they to jump, <laughs> okay? They uh, wouldn't push Look by yeah, it, they wouldn't pass push. it over. Yeah, yeah, exactly, pass it over, that's right. Now, one thing, so, But if you want to do read something of, uh, from Buddhism that relates, I think it's, uh, the Dalai Lama wrote a book called uh, The Art of Happiness in Society or something like that. Um, he wrote it with a Western Westerner, a psychiatrist. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. Anyway, uh, that'll give you some issues of social justice from a Buddhist perspective. Um, it's the closest thing I've ever seen in Buddhism to what is con con uh, congruent with, uh, with Occupy. Yeah, really there was a report in the Shambhala Sun magazine a few months ago 
about how to create community where you are, I think that would be very valuable too. I'll try to find that one. Hey, the old guy's memory finally starts to work. The name of the person is Gene Sharp. Gene Sharp. Oh, if you don't read anything else about um, strategy and tactics for nonviolent action, because you know I'm, I'm I'm down in Buddhism, but I'm with them 100% on the nonviolence. Um, mm -hmm. As much as I want to smack these guys, I won't. Okay, uh, uh, because it, it isn't. It, and the thing of it is, not because it's uh, it's the wrong thing to do from what they deserve, but it's the wrong thing to do in, in terms of winning a revolution. We cannot stand up against the establishment if we get violent. They have all the guns that work the best. And now they have the authority uh, uh, of the military to take action against us. Um, and they're stepping away from that because of um, the freedom fighters who are uh, retired or out of the military, or, you know, come out of the military, and the uh, police officers who have taken a vow not to shoot us. So they have to or, uh, prepare the military to take action against us. Um, Gene Sharp. Marvelous. Yeah, S H A R P, I think. I thought you said sh sharp. Right. Right. <laughs> and it's, um, it's Gene with a G. Wendy, I have to, I have to stand up for Buddhism for a moment. Um, good luck with that. Good what, luck. what my, um, what, what, what I'm finding is that Buddhists admit that there's a problem in the world, and the idea is to get out there and you know do what we can to um, meet it and reverse it. You know, and in that way, it's very, you know, it's a very Occupy-like philosophy. Yeah. Well, I, I can, if I had to choose a philosophy, that would probably be the one that I'd be closest to. I meditate every day. You know, I, I read the Buddhist uh, literature. Mm -hmm. I do Dharma studies on a consistent basis. You know, I consider myself to basically be a, a Buddhist. Um, I also have a lot of my philosophical foundations in Christianity. Um, Without, I mean, but being a heretic there, of course. <laughs> well, the two are similar. That's the only thing. Very Christians similar. Are heretic, yeah. In my well, opinion. I don't think most Christians understand, except for those who wrote about the social gospel years ago, that Christianity is basically a revolutionary uh, mm -hmm. religion. And it's been twisted mm -hmm. out of being a revolutionary religion. I mean, this is the group that said, sell all that you have, take up your cross and follow me. Yes. Sell all that you have is the first words of that imperative. Mm -hmm. And you okay. know, interestingly, it's easier for a rich man to go through an eye of, uh, eye of a needle, uh, uh, easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for the rich man to enter the kingdom of God. If that's not Occupy revolutionary conversation, I don't know what is. And I say, thank God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for saying it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Where the heck is the church now with this stuff? Where are they? They should be in the revolutionary corners with us. And so should the Buddhists. You know, and well, so the Buddhists the are. And so should the Gnostics. And so should, and, so, and so should the atheists. They should all be in this revolution. Because it's the right thing to do. Gnostic. Okay, there well, you I go. Think, you know, I think at least the Christian leaders and the Buddhist leaders are making a huge deal about the environment. They are focusing on the environment. And the other thing that I hear Pope Francis and the Dalai Lama also talking about is the fact that factory farms are killing and torturing. They're doing this inhumane treatment towards animals. So current events, current issues, mm -hmm. I think some of these religious leaders are turned on to, you know, and they see the devastation, they see the social injustice, they see the, the terrible treatment to animals. So there, there's some movement there, which I like, you know, and it doesn't matter whichever you are, Buddhist or Christian, you know, there is some kernel that's kind of taking shape there and uh, saying, you know what, folks, follow your heart now, get your compassion going, um, you know, boycott these horrible entities that are creating this, this terrible climate of fear and injustice and inhumanity. Yes, and that's where all of these religions come into occupy. Come into play. Yes, yes, yes. And the Pope has come out against fracking too. He has. Now, how much do you hear of that? Mm -hmm. yeah, the Pope. Oh yeah. Yeah, the Pope has come out in opposition to fracking. 